Aloha everybody from Club Scrap. I'm Trisha and I am so excited to show you how to turn everything from that surf shop kit into eight beautiful scrapbook pages using our efficient method. I've got my instructions here and the collection ready to go. I of course am going to start by isolating just the paper from the collection and I'll set aside all these fun embellishments, charms, the ribbon and so on. And then you're going to want the accordion pocket file to help us stay organized. You see here we have four pockets, one pocket for each of the double page spreads we'll prepare for. Doing all the trimming at once, this helps us keep very, very organized. And this little lip on the accordion pocket file will go underneath my trimmer base, which then holds it in place while we work. And speaking of trimmer, I'm using my favorite Fiskars trimmer. If you don't yet have one of these, we can get one into your hands. It's one of the best investments you can make in your hobby. Like any any hobby, the having the right supplies really is the ticket to your success. So let's begin by just taking these photo mats. We're gonna practice our filing skills, okay? Let's get these mats into the appropriate pocket. Let's consider it a warm up. Okay, we'll begin by finding three yellow mats. There should just be three of them, one, two, three. All of these go into the pocket labeled one and two, so that's the first pocket. If you don't have that yet, don't worry, just have four piles, one for each double page spread. Next, we're gonna go for the aqua. So all three aqua, and the aqua, of course, is lighter than the blue. So three of those go into pocket three and four. And then I also want you to find just one of the green photo mats, put that in pocket three and four as well. Then three blue photo mats going into pocket five and six. And lastly, two green photo mats in pocket seven and eight. And we are all set. Next step, we need to put everything in order before we trim it. So we've got this big uh, pile of paper. Let's get this uh, sorted out. And so I, what I like to do is hold it in my, hold it in my arm uh, because I can see from the top edge a little more easily. The first thing we're going to take care of though is this sheet of cut aparts. The middle may have fallen out on you, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna put that face down on my trimmer. We'll start there. Uh, then find the one of the board prints, and it's pretty easy to tell what's what. This is the wave print, this is the board print. So board print goes face down. Next find the aqua. Just take one of those, that's that lighter shade, much lighter than that deep blue that's in there. Find a green, just one of those, and blue. This is that really vivid blue, it's so beautiful. Then cut apart. Find the one that has, from. it's usually in the back of your stack, by the way, the one that has these little uh, colored border strips on the end, and then the other one that has the waves in the strips here. Next, the remaining surf shop print face down, the last green, then one of the wave prints, put that face down. Your last aqua plane, oh, that's such a beautiful color. It's one, I think it's one of my favorite colors. Two yellow, that'll be next, easy to find those now that we have almost nothing remaining. Then the solid blue, lastly, the wave print again going face down. Let's flip everything back over. I already have my big, big circle popping out, so I'm going to separate this larger circle from the middle. Okay, so we have this one, and this piece is used in layout five and six, so I'm just gonna pop that in there. Now this one is actually split and used on two different uh, layouts. So there's a quote on here, the ocean stirs the heart, blah, blah, blah. And then there's the ending of the quote here, the word soul. So I'm just gonna place this in my trimmer so that I'm gonna make a cut here and then down straight to the other end. So 12 o'clock and six o'clock, just pop it in your trimmer and line up those sentence breaks with the blade. If you're new to the trimmer, just once you get it placed, push down firmly on the bar, and that will allow that piece to remain stable while you cut it. Now the left side of this is gonna go in pocket one and two. And the right side goes in pocket five and six. Now your um, piece may need a little trimming. So our, our print shop did not want this all falling apart, so they left a tiny little amount of paper 
on each end to prevent this from coming apart during the assembly and shipping process. So I'm just taking a little off the ends and you may wanna do the same thing on one of the other ends, just cut it at 12. And uh, now these pieces are gonna come apart. If you need, you can just do a little snip on that end and then this is perforated so it does come apart. This surfboard element, you can place it in pocket seven and eight. And the way I'm gonna do that is kind of at an angle so it's sticking up here to the right and you can still see your numbers on the left. This much larger piece goes in pocket one and two. I think I'm just gonna opt out of filing that and put it on the bottom of my pile because that'll be ready for me when I get there. And I'll just put this back under my trimmer and get rid of these little scraps. We're moving on to our first print that we'll trim. This one we're gonna place in the base of your trimmer right side up. Our first cut will be at seven and a half inches. And you'll see right away, this is just gonna go right in between this surfboard here. <laughs> Leave this piece lay where it landed, and we're gonna move down to four and three quarter. And I forgot to mention, if you are new to the trimmer, always make sure that the paper is flush at the top of this guide here. And if you're newer to measuring, just slow me down. You can even change the playback speed to 0.75 on your YouTube settings. So that really slows me down. But um, basically when I'm measuring, I always find the whole number. So in this case, four. And every vertical column brings me up. A quarter of an inch so if I want four and three quarters I just go to the left to make it bigger three columns and there I am at four and three quarters and again you can see that I'm I'm splitting these surfboards here okay this piece is used in layout three and four so again I'll place it in the pocket at an angle now the next surfboard I'm just kind of quick do this because we're here right now and I'll just let it be done and I'm gonna cut along the edge of the board. There is a little drop shadow um, behind the board. I'm just kind of following that guideline to isolate the board. And this is gonna set us up for success when we get to the, I think it's the first layout, layout one and two. So I, you can see I'm not making a big deal out of this. Just cut along the edge of the surfboard. We can get rid of this piece. And this is isolated now going into pocket one and two. The last strip to the right of the trimmer blade here, pocket three and four. And we're moving on to the sheet of aqua. Just make sure you have the one piece and a nice easy cut here at six inches. Stabilize always. Now we're gonna cut these two pieces at the same time. So stack them neatly and a nice easy cut here at eight and then four. And it's particularly important to stabilize when you're trimming two sheets at a time. Okay, so we've made a whole stack of papers the same size, right? They're all four by sixes, which is kind of handy. Take two of them and place in pocket five and six, and the remaining four in pocket seven and eight. What color is next? I hope you have green on deck. A little bit more trimming on this one. We'll start out by cutting at 11 inches. That gives us a one inch strip. Stabilize. Then slide down to nine and three quarters. So again, remember, find the whole number nine. Go left to enlarge to nine and three quarters. And then six and a half. Now rotate and notice again, I'm leaving these papers pile up here. That's what we want. Rotate the piece that's in the trimmer base and we'll trim at nine and four and a half. Even for these smaller pieces, always stabilize. Gather up the two larger rectangles. Those go in pocket five and six. And then you have a smaller rectangle that came off the end. We'll trim this in half at three and a quarter. Now we have two rectangles the same going in pocket three and four and we're gonna make a lot of rectangles out of this guy. So let's begin at 11 and a quarter. So again, 11, go left one column, 11 and a quarter. Nine. Six and three quarters. Four and a half. Two and a quarter. Okay, that's it. I know it's a lot of numbers, but 
We made all kinds of things. We made a whole bunch of rectangles the same size, and there is this little guy that fell off the end. All right, let's file the same size ones. Two of them go in pocket one and two, one in pocket three and four, one in pocket five and six, and one in seven and eight. The little guy also goes in seven and eight. We have two strips. They both go, they're different sizes. They both go in one and two. Moving on to the blue. We're gonna make a lot of cuts here at very high numbers to make very little pieces. We do this quite often. We're gonna cut every quarter inch all the way down to 10 and a half. So let's start at 11 and three quarters. 11 and a half. 11 and a quarter. 11. See, we're going all kinds of little cuts here. Then 10 and three quarters. We're slowing down now. Then 10 and a half. Now we're going to make a bigger move all the way down to nine and a half. <laughs> That's an inch piece <laughs> that we'll make here. From here, even bigger. We're going to go to eight. A nice whole number for you. And finally, four and a quarter. Again, noticing that everything just piles up to the right of the blade. Rotate the piece in the base. Let's cut at 11 and a quarter. Nine. Four and three quarters. The piece that you ended with goes in pocket three and four. The next piece is a square going in five and six. Then we have a rectangle, seven and eight, and a wee little piece of blue, seven and eight. Pick up the next strip. This is still pretty wide. We'll trim this at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. You made three squares. They're gonna go in pocket one and two, and there was a little guy off the end, five and six. Pick up all the rest of the pieces that fell. The widest, seven and eight. The next largest now, one and two. And all the rest of these should be the same size. They're all a quarter of an inch. Put two of them, two strips, in pocket three and four. Three strips in five and six and the last single strip in seven and eight. Cut apart time. Okay, so let's, once again, especially if you're new, let's study the what's happening on the edges. Do you see it says, remove paper outside of corner cutting guides, and that's the cutting guide. So everything outside of that, including the line itself, needs to go bye-bye. So I'm just gonna place this in my trimmer and do my best to look up here at this little corner, and I can see right where the edge of my blade is. I'm gonna line that up with that pencil line or that gray line on my print printable piece here. Now, that's hard to see a little bit because it's, the paper's kind of large at this point. So when I make a rotation, and now I can see here, and I can see much better down at the bottom corner here. Make my next cut. I'm gonna rotate again. This time my cut, if I look left, I should be pretty close to 12 inches, and I am. And one last rotation. So all four edges get that little, that little trim. You can throw away all of your little scraps here. And when we begin, I want you to have the paper positioned with these colorful stripes on the right. And that should also match what you see in the instructions. And by the way, if you haven't been following the instructions, that's totally fine. But if you do get lost, the, the pocket assignment for every piece is right here, and I'm just basically reading this out loud to you. So if this confuses you, just read what it says, follow the numbers, and you'll be fine. All right, our first cut, 11 and a quarter. Of course, you're going uh, between all the artwork here on the nearest quarter inch. Then we move to 10 and a half. Eight and a half. Six and a half. Four and a half. Three and a quarter. 
Now you're left with a series of images. And what you will want to do is take scissors and trim them into individual pieces. And Jacqueline very thoughtfully left a very pale line uh, around each of these images. And that's going to be your cutting guide for when you go through and do the detail. I'm not following a lot of details at this point. I, what I want to do is just separate the art enough so we can get it assigned because I used um, the different pieces of art on different layouts. So I'm just doing what I would call a rough cut and you can do that fine tuning cut when we're not recording, <laughs> taking up unnecessary wavelengths. Okay, let's sort out this mess here. We've got a bus that's blue going in one and two. The green bus, oh, it's so cute, seven and eight. Then we have a pair of surfboards here. They're gonna be adorable when you get them cut out. Those both go in one and two. Then we have the beach bum with the yellow sentiment, that's three and four. And stay wild, ocean child, that's going in five and six. Next, let's file the remaining pieces that came off the end. So dear beach, I think about you all the time. I love that, seven and eight. I'm a better person with a tan, three and four. It's always a good day to dance in the waves, five and six. Just another day in paradise, three and four. And then these two strips both go in pocket one and two. We get to do the run around, the trim around one more time. So I'm gonna line this up again, looking for that little hash mark and give it a rotation where I can see better. Sometimes I go back and clean up that last cut when I can get a better look at it from the top and bottom edges. Works really well. With those edges removed, make sure the orientation of the print brings you to the two border strips on the right. We'll trim out 11 for starters. 10. 7. Four. Rotate, cut at 10, and six, making sure the larger pieces stays on the left. And this piece goes in three and four, the square, five and six, and live aloha, seven and eight. Next, make sure your journaling prompt here is on the right, 10, eight, and six. The ocean stirs, seven and eight. Ocean air, salty hair, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> and the journaling prompt with the sunglasses, that both goes in one and two. And then three and four on the surfboard journaling prompt. One more piece here. 10, let's cut so easy. Eight, this large piece, five and six. And then the, uh, the green bus, seven and eight, and the wave, five and six. We have two more wave border strips going in, five and six. And that's the end of our trimming. Congratulations, you did it. Now we have a remaining stack of papers here. Just bring that into the scene. And I'm turning to page seven and eight of my instructions. And meanwhile, my, um, my accordion pocket file is held up by my trimmer. When I'm not trimming, this has to lay on its back or you risk things falling on the floor. We don't want that to happen, do we? Okay, so this entire remaining stack of paper, including that um, piece on the back, the die cut, that's what we want there, that's fine. I want you to take the top sheet and bring it to the right and kind of center it up so that this is the center of your workspace. If we look on the last page of our instructions here, we can see layouts seven and eight. And look, there's a green base here and the surf shop print on the right. So we should have what we need in pocket seven and eight. So we're working backwards. And I do that so that by the time we get to layout one and two, everything's stacked up nice and neat so that you can continue on with the project get your adhesive, and then just glue everything down. I'll give you some assembly tips along the way, um, but there's no need to um, have me watch you glue, you know, right? <laughs> okay, so let's begin here with this, this die cut strip. I love how this just carries it through, and I'm going to help transition from the paper to that piece with a piece of blue, 
what I would call a paper ribbon, pretty close to the top there, but certainly not touching it. Um, then you have a wider border strip, also in that nice deep blue that should nest with the deer beach. Um, on the left here, I'm gonna add my larger green mats here, right under the word surf shop. And then we have a bunch of these aqua mats. So these will nest onto the green here. Now I have two more, so I'm gonna set these down so I can show you how they work. So before you stick this down, these are gonna kind of slide just the upper corners. So the upper right corner, upper left corner can sneak under this cute little die cut and then bring this up to meet it. I will confess that I glued this down before thinking about this, so I cut little slots in there. If that happens to you, there's a workaround. I did want to use my, um, I used my book binding glue with a needle tip applicator to glue these narrow points down on the ends. Um, and that was why I got distracted from the fact I needed to glue these down first. It's all about order, isn't it? Okay, what else do we have in here? Um, we have this cute little green mat that's going to mat the, the bus. We have these two narrow strips. I'm gonna do my little banner trick where I just cut a little V into the end of each of these. And my friend Lisa, she has a little punch that she uses. It's like a hexagon shape punch. And it cuts this really nice little banner shape into the tag, but I never have it handy, so there you go. I'm gonna put this tucked in behind that little journaling prompt there on the right. And then when you have your little bus all cut out, he's gonna sit on top of there. It's gonna be super adorable, just trust me. <laughs> okay, now we have this, it happens to be the same height as these two pieces. So this is gonna do like a little spaced, spaced trio of elements. And then the narrow blue strip nests perfectly with live aloha that's gonna go up here. I guess I suggest bringing everything down a little to make room for that up here. Okay, now what else did we do? I'll show you some final tips. Clearly not a whole lot on this one. All I did was finish that up by trimming this out and applying it with our foam adhesive circles. Do you have those? I keep mine like really handy. Right under my table here, I got a shelf and I keep these uh, ready to go. I usually cut them in half, but if you don't have these foam adhesive circles, just stock up on those, they're really handy and they go a long way. Now here we have the facing page. One thing I added was one of those silver wave charms. And as usual, let's see, let me find my roll. I have a spool, we, we carry these. Um, this is not in your kit, but we carry a spool of this waxed cord. And it's, it's you see how stiff it is? I mean, it's really, I love the fact that it's waxed. And this is what I use to um, add a little something something to the top of my charm. So in this case, a tiny little bow. And it's easy to work with even with, um, you know, my hands. <laughs> I don't like to make small bows, but the wax cord makes it possible. And I just topped it with that. It kind of brings the eye to that cute little element. Now, what I did here, it's just so fun and easy. I took a crocodile and I just punched a hole in the nested strip. And I threaded that beautiful blue soft ribbon into the hole and taped it down behind here. Then ran it across and taped it around to the back. So it's kind of like a little bit of a ribbon illusion. It's not going all the way around. It's just going one end from there, a nice incorporation of the ribbon for that page. Leaving everything where it is, and I realize if you were to put this back into a bag or something, it's all gonna fall down, but that's okay because every piece will be where it needs to be. It's easy to figure it back out again. Just keep your instructions handy. I'll slide this over to the right, revealing the top of my next page. Move that to the right. And now what I see in front of me matches what's in my instruction image, the left and right side of layout five and six. So that will mean you'll want to empty pocket five and six. Now you may have noticed that I tend to distribute the items from the palm of my hand rather than the table. It's just a little bit easier to get things, you know, distributed as if you were dealing cards. Um, I used to play a lot of cards, so I'm, I'm good at that. Now what we have here is a series of uh, border strips that have to be assembled kind of in a weird order. So the first piece that will have to go down is a vertical strip and to the left of it I added this dark blue. Now the determining factor for where that's positioned will be this green piece but don't stick that down quite yet. 
that just tells me where this is going to go. I'm just saying this because when you do adhere everything, I just had to think it through a little bit, so I want to remind you that that has to happen. Next, a horizontal strip will be placed with a blue strip above that, I'm kind of building a little weaving, wave weaving here. <laughs> okay, then green goes back. Now I want to make sure that this strip doesn't meet the edges of the green. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit, probably more like two inches from the bottom edge. Ah, that's better. Now it anchors this nicely and the blue will fit on top of that. And then a four by six photo will layer on top of that. So this is a four and a half by six and a half. This is a four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then the photo will be four by six. Now above this, we've got another title. Once again, accented with the strip. It really lays it down nice. It creates all these little windows that we can fill with interesting things. Then we have our fun little wave. Now I will tell you that in Jacqueline's mind, she thought it'd be cool to add the surfboard to this, but I went another direction. Just want to let you know there was a lot of thought behind all of this. Um, what I did was took the green panel, put it vertically there, and believe it or not, this nests right in there. Now I'm going to bring in this little sentiment, the left side of the circle, or the, actually the right side of the circle is going to go there edge to edge. There's this really big charm. It's nice and flat. Um, and it's even got a textured back so that if you use our book binding glue, it'll stay forever. It's really nice. I topped it with some of that wax cord. Place it right there. Oh, me love that. Okay. Now let's take this big round guy. He's going to be somewhere around there. And the remaining large dark blue mat gets nested with aqua. So what we're doing here is bringing in the aqua of this base over to the right and then another photo mat here and this kind of gets tucked in perfect next door this nests onto your square blue and just bring this down enough you got palm treeville over here on the right loving that and this will nest onto the surfboard i put the bottom edge here and kind of had it angling in now this piece, I'm going to do that trick again where I make a little V cut in there, or if you have a punch, then grab that really wide aqua ribbon, and we're going to trim a little swallow's tail into that. And this is just thinner than this enough to where it creates a little contrast, and that's going to be tucked behind this circular piece here. Phew, that's... That's it, I think, for this one. So I will show you my finished layouts and, and provide a few tips. Here we go. I kept this free of adhesive, <laughs> and I never even put it down because I really wanted to be able to have these positioned before I slid this one underneath. Wanted it all placed well. That fits perfectly, and the title is angled in a fun way. I like how that turned out. Now the facing page, so fun. Again, nothing overly complicated other than just the order of assembly. Remember, vertical first, horizontal about two inches up, then bring these guys in, then your title, and the rest of this will fall into place perfectly. And there's my little charm finished off with the, the wax cord from my stash. I'll move the base of this one sheet over to the right. Yes, things are gonna move around, get messed up, it's okay. Then one more sheet slides over. Now we have sunny yellow. And we'll reverse into the directions down to layouts three and four here. Okay, now go to the pocket. Empty, three and four. Sometimes when I'm not concentrating, I will, when I'm starting, I'll empty pocket one and two because it's the first pocket, but it's really not. We, have, we start at the back and work our way to the front. I think it makes sense for most people who have been doing the method for a while. Okay, we have these big prints. Let's take care of those. The surf shop goes to the right. So by splitting the print apart, I could make this look a little different than the other uh, print and bring this to the left because before it was switched around. And then I'm going to create a little separation of color here, a transition color to get us from the print to the plane. On the left side, I'll add this vertical strip here with the title, I'm a better person with a tan. And above it, we'll add some blue, wants to reinforce that color. Across the top, we have the green rectangles, nice splash of green there. 
and then a horizontal. And oh yes, we went just another day of paradise going across here. We have, I guess this is up a little higher, a little tighter. This is gonna tuck in and nest with our journaling prompt. Now one thing I did do is added, and you're gonna wonder where in the heck I got this print, this, uh, this paper, but it's not paper, it's ribbon. So I, I just added that before nesting any of this stuff. Just past that um, blue strip here. That's optional, of course. It's all optional, right? Then two tilted mats. And this is nested with the green and placed right in this spot here. A word about these cut-aparts. If you have a lot of pictures, just put your, put your pictures on top of them. The cut-aparts are just there to help you if you just don't have enough, you know, enough pictures to go around. And sometimes that's the case. Like maybe I was lazy. I only took like four pictures. Well, don't use this layout then. <laughs> if I'm on vacation, I'm taking a lot of pictures. Okay, that's that's it. I mean, this is super easy. I think there might be a charm on this one too. I use a little cute little wave charm over here with the top with some, ah, there it is. Cute little charm. And then there's the ribbon kind of adding a little sparkle to this page. Everything else is very straightforward. I did mount that with some of that foam adhesive circles there. Here, I uh, simply nested this and added it. I mean, what could be easier than that? It's just a nice dimensional, low effort, eye-catching embellishment that would, would cut surfboard. All right, here we are, sliding this on over. Boom, now the blue comes, boom. And we are at one and two. It's like when your GPS says you have arrived. <laughs> Okay, this is a really fun page. All right, I'm going to start out by grabbing this. And this just, this page makes me so happy. Okay, so we've got our die cut. Boom. Right flush at the bottom edge here. Oh, not quite, not quite. Sorry, forgot about that. We have the narrower strip of green. There are two strips. One's a little wider. That's going to happily nest with this fun checked edge here. Now, cross the top. I want you to find the three squares. Boom. Boom, boom, okay. Below that, you're gonna go green first, then blue, then checked. Gives you a nice little frame to put those little uh, film strip style pieces in. Then we have our tilted yellows here on the left. They'll go up into the border, that's okay. One green here to nest with our ocean hair, uh, ocean air salty hair. And I should have added, I don't care. <laughs> now this so cleverly fits in here and you can cover all corners. It can, every corner can be kind of under the circle. See, just like that. And I placed this guy here and after it cut, it, it's trimmed out, it'll fit so nice right up here. And same for these guys, you're gonna tuck in the surfboards Kind of right in this department so they're sort of just cornering the photo oh it's so cute finally you've got your big surfboard i'm going to shove the end of it underneath the border strip and then finally this goes on the top flush with the right edge do you see how easily they came together i mean honestly it's a fabulous page so easy makes me really happy all right, here it is. I did make a three-part bow here with the taffeta ribbon. And honestly, I just had so many fun things to work with. Rivet, the ribbon was sort of like, ah, not really sure where to put this. But when I added this bow, it just, mm, icing on the cake, right? And you can see the cute little uh, van. When I fussy cut it, I just followed Jacqueline's very pale line and it gave it a nice look, a nice little border around there. The little tucked in, we've got our charm. The last thing added here, so nice. Um, I do have a ribbon video, a uh, ribbon basics video that shows how to make that three part bow. It's basically three pieces of the ribbon, the center, the loop, and then the base. Here we have a nice simple thing. Now here I turned this into sort of a tag deal and I used my ever popular badge, badge holder trimmer or uh, punch, badge punch. And we've been carrying these and going through quite a few of them. So if they're out of stock, we're always working on trying to keep them in stock. And it's just a nice heavy duty punch. So I added that strip to the tag and just tied the taffeta ribbon into a bow and then uh, swallowtailed the ends for a nice finishing touch. Well, that's 
that's we've reached the end that's layout one i i had a really good time and i'm just here all by myself if you're at a crop with your girlfriends or maybe just alone hanging out with me on a video i hope you had as much fun as i did and maybe even more and I look forward to seeing you again soon in another workshop video. If you like this collection, we do have a really fun card kit with Surf Shop. So come and make those cards with me. If you're not already a member, join us. We're a good time. It'll be fun. We'll make pick layouts together every month or cards every month. And you can switch that up however your heart desires. Can't wait to see you again soon. Aloha.